good dynamite so far. Well, and and let's follow that and the backstage stuff. There was Renee Moxley Good with Danhausen and Pockets and the Puddin Gang, and they brought in Paul Walter, who's apparently an actor. And this was rotten in a variety of ways, but it was short. And then that guy was the worst character on Cobra Kai a few seasons ago. Is this another one of these Cobra Kai motherfuckers? Well, he's done something else. He won an award for something I haven't seen, apparently. So I'm not going to judge that. But he was the worst character on Cobra Kai by far. All right. Well, he was the worst celebrity by far here on this program. <laughs> and then Brian Danielson faces Take a Shit one on one. And as a matter of fact, before the match started, MJF made his entrance and came to the ring and cut the promo and called him Take a Shit. Anyway, it, he says that and he says, try not to take one in your pants. I need you to win. And then he basically he was being instead of take a shit being MJF's guy and him paying him. They did the promo where take a shit was the innocent pawn in all of this. He's just having a match and MJF is browbeating him a little bit and mocking him and making fun of him. And then. Take a shit speaks back to him in Japanese and MJF mocks that and old take says what I said was kiss my ass and the people pop. So they have made. And again, this, I don't, all of these things, each one of them individually can be great, but together I don't understand them. MJF cuts a promo on Danielson and the fans. And of course that's as the best part as it usually is, best part of the show, and he's uh, he's going to be pinning shoulders on mats and banging rats. But they bring the guy out that is going to wrestle Danielson to try to beat him to stop him from getting the match that he desires with the heel champion. And they make that guy the baby face. By the time this whole thing was finished, the people were cheering for and behind old take to beat Brian Danielson, which that's a great way to make a young superstar because they, they got a lot of faith in old take apparently, but does it fit the, what they're trying to do in this situation with, which is MJF wants somebody to beat Danielson over the next four weeks so that he doesn't get a title shot. So should the people be cheering for that guy? The first, when this the whole thing first starts out, the very first match in this series, should the people be rooting for another guy to beat the top baby face so he can't get a hold of the heel champion? Do you see what I'm saying here? No, I really like the match. I love the match. However, got to the match yet. However, the point you're making is the correct one. If we're supposed to want to see Danielson as the big baby face get his hands on MJF, we shouldn't be cheering his opponent. Yeah, and, so I and mean, by the way, that audience is going to do nothing but cheer this guy because look at the kind of matches he has. Yeah. You can do all these things, but just maybe not at the same time. But anyway, MJF introduced these celebrities in the audience. Now, Again, you got to UFC gets celebrities. WWE gets celebrities. We had Kim Jong Il, Freddie Prince Jr., and the <laughs> the guy with the fucking uh, Grammy or the Golden Globe or the Whammy or the Slammy or whatever. I don't even remember who you're talking about now. Uh, Paul Walter. Oh, that guy. Yeah, Walter Hausen. That guy was back. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but he said Freddie Prince Jr. was a Scooby Dooby douchebag. And his name's not Kim Jong-il, it's Ken Jong-il. Anyway, he got to his catchphrase, here comes Danielson's music, Danielson comes down and chases MJF up the ramp, and MJF runs like Bobby Heenan in his heyday. Can so, I stop you there? Yes, you can. Should MJF still be that kind of heel who runs in that kind of way from the baby face he's going to be wrestling? You know, Ric Flair would back off or... I don't know if he, I would say run, but he would back off from a Dusty or whoever's opponent was, so you knew he was chickening out of fighting him at that moment, but he didn't just run away. Do you think that's appropriate? Do you think that's something he should still be doing? You know what? Here's the thing. MJF is so 
magnetic of a personality to watch. This is his equivalent of Steve Austin's mud hole stomps. They look like shit, but they work for him. I, I'll buy it. The fucking run. It was... <laughs> I see what you're saying, but just everything he does is he, he, and he spins emotions on a dime to fit whatever the fuck's happening. But anyway, he was gone, and we have Take versus Danielson, two baby faces. Okay, now that we've established that, they started off hot wrestling and wrestling, I underline, and the kid is good. I wish that I could actually pull for him and endorse him and praise him. But we've already know if, 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 he comes from DDT. He's one of Twinkle Toes' pals. He's done the comedy shit. He's, there people are, if, as soon as I say anything good about the guy, they're going to send video of him wrestling a child, a little girl, or a doll. And it's a shame because of all of the bad subpar or just joke wrestlers that Twinkle Toes has found or brought or mined out of Japan, whether it be the girls or Nakazawa or whatever. This guy's got size. He moves well. He's got fire. His shit looks good. And he's got a likability for people. But, you know, so I'm, I'm conflicted. I can't full-throated endorse him because we know what he's done and who he's been involved with. And as soon as I do that, people are, oh, look here, here he's, he's fucking doing a hurricane run on a six-year-old fucking paraplegic girl. I agree with you, but my, where I'm at with this kind of stuff is this. This guy hasn't done anything stupid here yet. And I say yet because I expect it, because I expect it from everyone. Because that goes into my first, my, my other part, which is just about everyone unless you've been in the WWE system from day one, and then it's a different brand of stupidity, just about everyone has been on a show or been a part of something that's just completely embarrassing to wrestling and people who care about it. Yeah, that's true. I think that's the sad state of wrestling. And it is a very sad thing, but... Remember just... I said the last couple of years that I actually took bookings, I had to ask ahead of time. Now, the Invisible Man won't be on the show. We're not doing dance routines. I had to go down a checklist. Anyway, the match, they had a modern-style match, but Danielson it, it can pull that off better than most. And Danielson was giving him all kinds of stuff, but Take was there for it. He was there for it. He, he wasn't in over his head. And they had put the... The fans, as we said, they manipulated the fans to his side. So as it, especially as it went on and he was looking better and better, they, they, well, we're going to see an upset. That's a happening. Or we're just behind this guy. There's, you know, there's one spot. Danielson went for a hurricane Rana off the apron of the floor. And I think the guy wasn't quite ready for it and they fell bad, but didn't get hurt. But then old take gives Danielson a great brain buster on the floor. That would have, been, as a matter of fact, in Mid South Wrestling, that was a hospitalization angle. It looked like a million dollars, and he just rolled Danielson in and went for a senton, and Danielson got his knees up ten seconds after being brainbustered on the floor. A guy with a history of concussions. Yeah, DiBiase disappeared to Japan, but the fans didn't know that. But he disappeared yeah. off TV for a few weeks after that, at least. Yes. So, because uh, they can do these things, doesn't mean they should. Unless it's an angle to make money. It just nobody will ever remember that move again. That was in a mat. Anyway, the people were behind old take. They exchanged the forearms. And, and if you saw take a sheet, take a sheet, take a shit, whatever. Now I can't even pronounce his real name. What do they say? Though? They go, is it Takeshita? Is that what it is? Takeshita or whatever the fuck. Old take. <laughs> or that. I'll just, I'll just go back to that. Why he not? won the he won the forearm exchange and hit and hit a big clothesline and hit a great wheelbarrow suplex. And then Danielson sidestepped a charge and hit that running knee. What is the, the Bukaki knee? It's not that. And Take <laughs> took an awesome bump. <laughs> Unbelievable bump. It looked like a big cover. One, two, kick. It was a two count. And I said, wait, what the okay, then they gotta be putting him over. But then Daniels, but then how would that, that screw up the rest of the angle? 
and Danielson hits the stomps and then gets a cross face and the referee called it because take was already out. Seriously. After what? That's the way I've said Brian Danielson. So he he's, he's a great talent, but he's so worked up in having the modern style matches that I think sometimes he loses track of how to make shit make sense and or pop people. Hey, if I could ask you a question, because this one actually was one that uh, I noticed earlier when I looked, people are already sending into the drive through What are your thoughts on that as a finish, the guy passing out in a move? Under the right circumstances, it's in, in Bret Hart and Steve Austin at WrestleMania. That was A1, right? Because that called for, that was the point. This was... We're going to, the business of this match was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here as I run through this checklist, Danielson has to win this match to continue on to win all the matches till he gets MJF. So Danielson's got to win, right? I believe so. But they also want to obviously give take as good a match as possible and get the people behind him and make him a bigger star in this process or elsewise he wouldn't have had been this close and almost beaten Brian Danielson, correct? You would think, but there's no guarantees considering the booking. Well, okay. So then, since Danielson's going to win, but it needs to be with take looking as strong as possible, then explain to me why when take hit the wheelbarrow suplex and then charged at Danielson, but Danielson sidestepped him and hit that running knee and take took the awesome bump and Danielson covered him, that couldn't have been the one, two, three. The place would have popped. What a fucking match. They were up for it. It came out of nowhere. It gave taken out because he was on the offense until the final blow was landed. And at the same time, Danielson wins convincingly, but instead, no. Two count, then stomp the shit out of the guy and get a fucking submission hold on a dead body. <sighs> Modern wrestling. If he wins but, the next match and the match after that with the same finish, where he sub not submits, but he the guy passes out in the move, does it make more sense? Is it more palatable then? Yeah, then just don't have take being the one to be the first one to fucking do that. If you want to have your match where you make take a star, don't have it as part of a match where you or a series of matches where you're gonna have Danielson put a fucking submission hold on a dead body. All of these things can happen, just not at the same fucking time. But it was a good match. 